Welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be going over my operating system notes and I'm going to be talking about what we discussed during the lectures and I'll tell you what was important, what we actually used. So the first definition is OS. It can be viewed as a resource allocator or control program that controls IO devices. That's pretty important. The kernel, that's the program running at all times on, on a computer. It's important. Middleware, we don't really like use that much. Software frameworks that provide additional services bundled in with the OS. Here's another good definition for OS. These both definitions, they're both good. OS includes a kernel that is always running middle frameworks and system programs that aid in managing the system while it's running. So it's another definition. In chapter 1.2 was computer system organizations. Uh, the bus provides access between the components and memory. Self-explanatory. The device controller. That's responsible for moving data between peripheral devices. And then we have the device driver. Each device controller has a driver and that provides OS with a uniform interface to the device. The memory controller, it synchronizes access to memory and interrupt. We kind of use interrupts like further on in the chapter, so it's good to know now. So an interrupt is done by sending a signal to the CPU by using a system bus saying that an event needs attention. So this is how it's done. The controller raises an interrupt by sending a signal on request interrupt on the interrupt request line. The CPU catches interrupt and dis, uh, dispatches it to the interrupt handler, and the handler clears the interrupt by uh, servicing the device. Interrupt chaining. So these steps we're going we're to use later on in the chapters. Interrupt chaining each element in the interrupt vector points to a list of interrupt handlers that the ser that could service the program that could service the request. Um, we'll talk about that in other chapters. The bootstrap program, I think it's the one of the tests. It's going to be the first program to run on a computer when you power it on, which uh, loads the OS. And this is like just notes I was taking. Uh, networking uses bits, uh, storage uses bytes, just some random notes. But the bootstrap program you will be using, just remember it's the first program to run on the computer and it loads the OS. Secondary storage is non-volatile, such as hard drives or like solid-state drives. What non-volatile means, it doesn't get erased when the computer gets turned off. Primary storage, it does get erased, and it's volatile when the computer is turned off. That'd be RAM, cache, and registers. We kind of talk about those. It's going to be in future tests. Remember that. Uh, DMA, direct memory access. So the device controller sends one big chunk of data using sends one big chunk of data directly to the main memory without the bothering the CPU. We don't really use that. A core. Uh, so this is like execute this executes instructions and registers for storing data locally. Uh, the multiprocessor, so uh, system with more than one processor, multi-core system, multiple cores on a single chip. Uh, they use less power and they're faster and they are faster to communicate. Processor, a chip that executes instructions and calculations. Pretty important. CPU processor or CPU. They're pretty much the same, the computer processing unit or processor. It's pretty much the same thing, that executes instructions. A core, uh, the base and computation unit of a CPU, like a CPU could have multiple cores. Multi-core, many cores on the CPU. And then uh, non-uniform memory access, NUMA, provides a group of CPUs local memory, fastest access local memory. Uh, blade servers, we kind of talk about a little bit. Multiple processing boards, IO boards or networking boards in the same chassis. Uh, clustered systems gathers multiple CPUs together, composed of multiple nodes. A node is a multi-core system. They share storage and are connected by LAN. And then we have some OS operations: a trap or execution software generate imp uh, interrupt. A process. Oh, this is like so big right here. He s he stresses this. Not the professor that teaches this course. Uh, process is a program and execution. Multi-programming: you run more than one program at a time. Multitasking: a CPU executes multiple processes by switching among them. That's pretty important. Uh, mode bit. So this is really important. The kernel mode is uh, the bit is zero, and bit one is user mode. So that's pretty important. A system call for a user program to ask operating system to do a task that a user program couldn't do. OS processing management. Uh, so this creates, deletes users, uh, system processes, schedules processes, threads on CPU, suspending and resuming processes, provides mechanisms for process saving, sync process sync mechanism for process communications. Always, uh, always memory management to keep track of memory and what processes are you are using memory. These are pretty much saying what they do. Like always memory management, that's what it does. It allocates and deallocates memory space, moving process and data in and out of memory. All OS file management, uh, creating and deleting files, directories to organize files, uh, supporting primitives for file and directory manipulation, mapping files into mass storage, backing up files on non-volatile medium. It's just what it does. OS mass storage management, mounting and unmounting, free space management, uh, storage allocation, disk scheduling, um, partitioning protection, OS system management, uh, memory management component that includes buffering, caching, and spooling, device driver interface, and driver-specific devices. 
In the distributed system, a collection of separate computers that work together as a single system. Bitmap, we don't really use. String of in, uh, binary digits that can be used to represent the status of in items. Here we have like a, on like a number full of ones and zeros. Zero means it's available, and then one means it's busy. This could be computers. Computer one, computer zero, one, two. It's just a way to represent if uh, something is if a resource is busy or available. Accelerometer, accelerometer uh, allows a mobile device to detect orientation. It's pretty self-explanatory. We don't really use that. Client server system server or satisfies requests by clients. And I think here we're getting into the lecture. So the hardware at the bottom, OS is on top of that, and then there's applications and the user uses those. So the kernel is always running in memory. I kind of started that. EEPROM, erasable program, read-only memory. BIOS would be an example. And then we have the device controller, which is hardware. The local buffer access for quicker execution. And the software would be the device driver. So I'm just going over like a little bit of the of the lecture. CPU cannot be busy. I think CPU. I think this means CPU has to be busy. So it always the CPU doesn't like to be like um, not doing anything. So this means the CPU has to be busy. I don't know why I wrote it wrong. Scheduler selects a process either uh, first come first serve, short as you are first, or round robin. This is really important. We're going to cover this thing chapter nine or ten. This is important. And these are based off uh, short as you are first is either burst time or the shortest job first. No, shortest job first and then uh, which one uses round robin uses burst time. You you'll understand what that means in later lecture. System call. IO can't be idle so handles another process using the scheduler while it waits. Interrupt creates a system call known by the kernel we kind of mentioned that before. The ISR tells kernel that a process is ready. Sends for the interrupt service routine. And then we have Interrupt, ex interrupt exception generated for process does something wrong. Okay, uh, some examples would be invalid operation develop. Oh, these are kind of important because they like ask you about these in class. An example of an interrupt exception would be invalid operation division by zero. Like if you're a program, you can't divide it by zero. Stack overflow, uh, folding flow, never flow, or memory out of bounds. Once the interrupt happens, the ISR is invoked and the system call is called and terminates. Throughput is the amount of data traveled, and then multiprocessor system, parallel systems, tightly coupled systems. I think I'm naming examples here. Advantages increase throughput, economy, scale, increase reliability, and fault tolerance. Uh, these are the um, pro the pros of a multi course of a multi processor system. These are on the test, so that's really important. And I think that's it for chapter one for the lecture and for like the key terms in the book. If this helped in any way, please leave a like and subscribe.